A new feature that exists in VATAS that did not exist in VISTA is that timekeepers can now submit a leave request by proxy. What that means is that timekeepers can now submit a leave request on behalf of one of the employees that they are either a primary or a backup timekeeper for. We strongly recommend that you do not do this unless you have a note or an email from your supervisor specifically telling you which employee to put the leave request in for, on what day, for what hours, and for what leave type. This way, if the employee ever comes back and has a problem with that leave request, at least the timekeeper was never the one that made the decision to submit that leave request for the employee. You are only doing what you are asked to do by your supervisor. When the time comes that you're asked to submit a leave request by proxy, you will do so in the following manner. You'll first go to Select Employees. When you're in Select Employees, you'll see all of the employees that you are either a primary or a backup timekeeper for listed in alphabetical order. In this example, let's say that our supervisor has asked us to put in a leave request for our employee whose first name is GS employee, last name full time. Remember, you will see actual first and last names. We go to select employees and find our full time GS employee. At the bottom of select employees are all of these actions that you can take to include submitting a leave request by proxy. But before you can take any action, you first must indicate which employee you want to take an action on and you do so by putting the check in the box in front of their name. We've now selected full-time GS employee. We scroll to the bottom and click on leave requests. A common mistake that I see timekeepers make is that rather than submitting an actual leave request by proxy, they just go to the employee's timesheet and manually add that leave time onto the timesheet. This is not the correct way to do a leave request by proxy because everything in VATAS is request driven. You must submit the leave request and it must be approved by the supervisor. We are now in employee leave request for our full-time GS employee. Any screen in which you see the blue search rectangle, it is exactly that. It is a search bar. It is to narrow down results that are already in VATAS. So again, something that I commonly see timekeepers do when they're trying to put a leave request in by proxy, they immediately go to the blue search bar and begin typing in the employee's name or trying to select a leave type. But remember, the blue search bar is only to search for something that is already in the system. What we want to do is we want to add a leave request. Once we click Add Leave Request, again, it shows us our employee's name, the employee that we had already selected by putting the check in front of their name. It's very important in VATAS that leave is only submitted within the employee's regularly scheduled tour of duty. If you're not sure what your employee's schedule is, over on the right-hand side, you can click the green Schedule button. We're putting this in based off of the employee's most recent permanent schedule, and even if the status says pending, this is still the schedule you would want to look at. We simply click on the schedule name, and it shows us that our full-time GS employee works 7 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday of each week, with a short day on the first Friday. This is also an instance when you would want to use the breadcrumbs to navigate. At the top of the screen, we have our breadcrumb that says Leave Request Form. We click on that and it takes us right back to our employee's leave request form. For this example, let's say that our employee is taking sick leave. From the leave type drop-down box, we select LS sick leave. We click on the calendar, and again, for this example, we'll say that the employee is taking leave on Friday the 22nd, which is our employee's short day from 7 to 3.30. The end date is also the 22nd. We again click on our calendar, select the 22nd. For our start time, we can simply type 7, and when we tab, it fills in the colon, the zeros, and the a.m. For our stop time, we can select either 3.30 p.m. or 15.30, whatever you prefer. 
we type 1530 and when we tab it automatically generates our 30 minute meal. Something that we recommend to timekeepers, although submitter remarks is optional, you put in the name of the supervisor who has asked you to submit this leave request by proxy. So you could just type per supervisor whomever. The only difference in putting a leave request in for yourself and putting one in for someone else is that the timekeeper must select the timekeeper submission reason. There are three options here. Employee unavailable to submit leave request, hard copy 71 on file, and per supervisor request. Per supervisor request is what I would like to be able to select in all cases. Sometimes you may have a hard copy 71 on file and you could select that reason as well. I would try to stay away from employee unavailable to submit leave request because again, I want to make sure that the timekeepers are covered. As we scroll down, you see sick leave purpose, and this says if you are requesting sick leave, you must indicate the reason. Remember, none is an acceptable reason, and if you're putting a sick leave request in on behalf of someone else, you surely do not want to speculate on why that person is sick. Now having said that, if you do know the reason that that employee is sick, please do not put those reasons in the submitter remarks because this does create a permanent record and that employee may not want the reason they're sick to be listed in those remarks. We simply scroll to the bottom of this form and click Submit. Leave request successfully updated. The total hours has now filled in at 8 and our request is pending as you can see in the top right hand corner. Another note that I'd like to throw out is that if this request needs to be edited at any time, the employee cannot edit a request that has been submitted by proxy by the timekeeper. Only the timekeeper or any other timekeeper on the delegation of authority for that particular TNL can edit a request that the timekeeper has submitted. Vice versa, a timekeeper cannot edit a request that the employee has already submitted. 